Okay, welcome back to part 5 yeah, of uh, chapter 6. We were looking at the uh, second question. Yeah, what is the value of the cash flows today? Yeah, the same cash flows. Here we looked at the value of the cash flows uh, after 5 years or at the end of the 5th year. Yeah? But here we want to look at the value of these same cash flows today, now at time 0. Yeah? So this is the formula. Okay, yeah, this is the formula. The value at time 0, we can use the same formula as given here. Yeah? 100 multiplied by 1 plus 7%. Usually what we do is we discount this. Yeah? 100 divided by 1 plus 7, you discount over 1 year because this is the end of, this cash flow is, is at the end of the first year. Yeah? So therefore you discount over 1 year. But here I'm using a formula, yeah, a general formula. We can use the same formula for any value, yeah, time value. So we take the cash flow. Here is the future value. Remember in chapter 5, we call this the future value. Multiplied by 1 plus r raised to the power of negative n. Yeah? So here, because it's time 0, it is 0 minus 1. Yeah? 1 is the cash flow when this this the time when this cash flow occurs yeah therefore you discount over one year likewise the 200 discount over two years yeah negative two raised to the power of negative two means you discount yeah at seven percent okay uh, for two years okay and this one will be negative three yeah and this is negative four and this is negative five yeah so when you sum them all okay, these are all now in present value then you can sum them yeah you can add otherwise you cannot add yeah so you add, you get $874.17, yeah? So that is the present value, yeah? Okay, so what is the, uh, this is the answer for uh, the second question, yeah? Next, what is the value of the cash flow, uh, cash flows at year three, yeah? So there are many ways of doing this, of year three. So how do you do that, okay? This is the formula. You can use the same formula here. The value of these cash flows at year 3 is 100. Note this, yeah? Here, it's the same formula. All these three use the same formula. Okay? 100, the cash flow at time 1, multiplied by 1 plus R, raised to the power of N, here is 3, minus T, yeah? T is when this cash flow occurs at time 1, yeah? end of year 1. So this means that you compound this over two years, okay? Because this is at the end of the first year, so you need the value at the end of three years. So you compound this twice, yeah? You compound this twice, okay, to the third year. This one, okay, this cash flow occurs at the end of year two, okay? You compound this over one year, yeah? Because uh, this is three minus one, yeah? Three is then you need the value. Okay, value at time 3. Minus 2, this is the time when the cash flow occurs. Yeah? 3 minus 2, that means you raise the power of 1. Yeah? You compound once. This 3 minus 3, yeah? because this is the cash flow that occurs at year 3 here. But you want the value at year 3 as well. Yeah? So 3 minus 3 is 0. So this you don't compound, you don't discount. Is that okay? Here you compound 1 year, here you compound 2 years. Now, the fourth cash flow at the end of year 4, okay, this you discount, yeah, because this cash flow occurs later, 300, yeah, occurs at the end of year 4, but you want the cash flow value at end of year 3. Therefore, you discount, yeah, that means 1 plus 7% raised to the power of 3 minus 1, negative power. Okay, negative 1 means you discount, yeah, you discount 1 year, once at 7%, yeah. Then the last cash flow here is 300 multiplied by 1 plus 7% raised to the power of negative 2. Yeah? This is when you want the cash flow value. This is when the cash flow occurs. Yeah? This 300 occurs at the end of year 5. So 3 minus 5 okay, is negative 2. Therefore, you discount this $300 at 7% over 2 years to bring this, bring this to the value of the third year. Yeah? And then you can sum them all up. You get 1070.90. Yeah? There are many ways of doing this. Yeah? This is one way. 
Okay, another way, a simple way, yeah? Okay, you can go back and try. I'm not showing you the answer here. You can take this, yeah? You want to get the present value times zero. What you can do is you take this. This is the value at year five. You discount this, yeah? You divide this by one plus seven percent raised to the power of five, yeah? You get this value here, eight, seven, four point one seven. Okay, so it means that this value at end of year 5 is exactly the same value at the end of year 2. Yeah? The number looks different, right? But the value is the same. Yeah? The value is the same. Yeah? Because this is the cash flow, this is the value of these cash flows at year 5. And it is the value of all the same cash flows at year 0. So these two must be the same value. So therefore, when you discount this over 5 years, you get this value. And if you take this and you compound this over five years, you get this value. Yeah? So it must be the same. Yeah? Likewise, if you want to get the value for year three, there are two ways you can do this. You can take this and discount this over two years. That is 1226.07. You divide this by 1 plus 7% or 1.07 raised to the power of 2. You discount over two years. Yeah? Because this is the fifth year, you want to bring it to the third year. So you discount this over two years at 7%, you get this value. Or you can take this value, you compound this over three years, you get this value here. Yeah? So for example, 874.17 uh, multiplied by 1 plus 7% raised to the power of 3, you get 1070.90. So that's how you solve that. Yeah? Right, so as a summary, yeah, this is the formula, general formula that you can use. This is not given in the book, yeah, but it's quite useful formula. That's what I've used here. Yeah. So the value of all the cash flows yeah, at time n is equal to the sum. Yeah, this symbol uh, indicates sum. Yeah, sum. Yeah, that means you add. Okay, you add the product of these two elements. Yeah. One is the cash flow at time t when the cash flow occurs, multiplied by 1 plus r raised to the power of n here. This is where you want the value. Okay, here it is 5, and here it's 2, here it is 3, yeah? And minus t, t is when the cash flow occurs, yeah? Time 1, for example, is 1. Time 5 is for cash flow number 5, yeah? So well, uh, if you multiply this and then you add all this, so this is this formula here is indicated by this, yeah, it's summarized by this. So this formula is quite useful yeah, to solve all um, multiple cash flow value and yeah, the value of multiple cash flows. All right. Okay. Let's move on to the next slide. Okay. And now we can show the same example here in the spreadsheet. Okay, now uh, we have seen here, yeah, first year the cash flow is 100. We are looking at this table here, eh? and also this table, and also this table. Yeah? We'll look at this a uh, bit later. All right. Um, let me adjust this slightly yeah, later. Okay. Now, <clears throat> these are the cash flows 100 at the end of year 1, 200 at the end of year 2, 200 again at the end of year 3, 300 at the end of year 4, and uh, 300 again at the end of year 5. Yeah? Now, the balance, yeah? so you deposit 100, then 200, and so what is the value of all this at the end of year 5? Yeah? That's what we want to do in the first part, first question. Therefore, here, at the end of year one, you get 100 only because this is the cash flow. Yeah? You receive 100, you deposit that uh, $100. So that's what you have yeah? at time one. For time two, you get another 200, but you earn interest from the first 100 that you have got. Yeah? So this is 7% multiplied by 100, you get $7. So the balance now increases. Yeah? 100 plus 200 plus 7, you get three hundred and seven dollars then the fourth year you get seven percent from three hundred and seven dollars because this was uh, outstanding for one year you earn interest of twenty one dollars and forty nine cents that is seven percent multiplied by three zero seven point uh, three zero seven yeah therefore you get twenty one point four nine but at the end of year three you also deposit yeah another two hundred so this plus this 
plus the previous balance, you get 5 to 8. Yeah? So you see that it's growing. Yeah? Then the following uh, year, at the end of year 4, you get 7% from this. So this is your interest, 36.99. But you also get another yeah, uh, cash flow of 300. You add another cash flow of 300. So your balance in the account becomes higher. Yeah? You deposit another 300. Therefore, this plus this plus this, you get 865.48. And finally, in the final year, fifth year, you earn interest 60.58, yeah, $60.58. This is 7% multiplied by this balance here. Therefore, you get this plus 300 that you deposit. Another 300 at the end of year 5, yeah. So when you add this plus this plus this, you get 1226.07. This is the same answer that we've got. Yeah? This is the future value of all these cash flows. Is that okay? This is what it means. Yeah. Now, what is the present value? Yeah? Present value, we try and uh, we, we work out this way. Yeah? Just to explain, we get the present value first. And then let's assume that we have this balance at the, at the beginning. Yeah. We, we go back to the slide just now. This is the this is the present value that we got. Yeah, eight seven four point one seven. Yeah. Let's assume that we put this uh, amount in an account. Yeah, and uh, in that account, from that account, yeah, at the end of year one, we withdraw one hundred. Then for second year, we withdraw two hundred. Third year is another two hundred. Then fourth year another three hundred. Then fifth year another three hundred. Note that the cash flows are the same. The only difference is this is positive because you receive the cash. Okay, here you withdraw from your account. Yeah? This is what you have in the account. But you withdraw these amounts in the account. Yeah? And finally, you can show that this will become zero. Yeah? It means that what you, what you withdraw here is exactly the same as what you put in. Yeah? So this cash flow must be the same value as this. Yeah? So this is the present value of all these cash flows. Is that okay? So how do you show this yeah, in this table? Yeah? So if you have $874.17 now, you earn interest, which is 7%. Yeah? So 7% multiplied by 874.17, you get $61.19. Right? But from this, you withdraw yeah, 100 at the end of year one. This is what you get at the end of year one, interest, but you also withdraw. So this plus this minus that, yeah? or you add this negative amount, you get a lower amount, 835.36. Okay, so you find that this becomes lower, yeah? it drops, the balance drops. Likewise here, second year you withdraw another uh, 200, but you earn 7% from the remaining balance. Yeah, So this interest also becomes lower over time okay so if you extend this yeah, you can actually work this out i hope you will do yeah in your own time at home you'll work this out yeah so this value here interest is seven percent from the previous balance yeah so seven percent multiplied by 835.36 you get 58.48 all right so you withdraw this 200 but you get this interest from this amount. Therefore, this plus this minus this, you get this amount. Yeah? So as you move down, you find that you will withdraw all the amount here and your balance. Yeah? We started with 874.17. But because you withdraw all this, despite the interest that you get, your balance will be zero at the end of your five. Therefore, okay, the summary is, what, what is the implication? Yeah? The implication is that the present value of all these withdrawals or these cash flows must be equal to this yeah? because at the end of the term you get zero value here there's nothing left yeah? so therefore this value now must be equal to this cash flows value is that okay at different times yeah? so this is the present value this is the future value of the same cash flow this is the present value of the same cash flow yeah? You can also show this, okay, I don't have time here on this clip, I do not want to take this longer. You can try it on your own, okay, what we have uh, shown here is that you can also do it for the third example, yeah, where we want to determine the value at the end of year three, yeah. So for an end of year three, you do partially, yeah, 
what we did for the first example and partially for the second example.